guys, this is Jameson with Gahagan Laboratories. This is our first video in a new series of videos that we're going to be doing. I'm um, super excited to be back behind the camera. Um, today's video is going to be about uh, a smaller Falsuma species that are quickly becoming one of the more popular small day geckos, and that is the neon day gecko, also known as Falsuma clemmeri. Uh, Felsuma clemmeri have an ICUN listing of endangered currently. Felsuma clemmeri are found in the Ampaz and Dava Peninsula in northwestern uh, Madagascar, very small habitat, and they're also found in a pocket in southern Madagascar by uh, Mendroza Lake. Um, these are found in bamboo forests primarily, um, and they can be very degraded uh, as well as on the fringes of human habitation. Uh, many are found like on the edges of small villages, towns. Uh, their diet in captivity, and this has been what I've gone with the last five or so years I've worked with this species, is I offer a fruit diet, um, be it Pangea, Rapashi, uh, there's several other Zoomed makes. Um, I mix up flavors because uh, I've noticed that over the years, uh, if you give one particular blend, it, the nutrition is all pretty across the board similar but they'll become accustomed to it and get tired of it it's like the same thing with feeding kids um calcium dusted uh, small insects i do uh Heidi eye fruit flies uh both golden and black just to give a little bit of variety um i'll also do uh one eighth to one quarter inch crickets all dusted uh in calcium with d3 i'll use mineral as well as rapashi uh calcium plus um, I switch up my uh, nutritional powders just to vary vitamin content. Uh, most people will stick to one and that's fine. It, it works. You'll get healthy eggs and have individuals live very long. Uh, these guys will breed readily in captivity and they're one of the few day geckos that you can actually raise their offspring in the cage with the parents uh, in most of, uh, I mean out of the 30 some species of Felsuma. I can only offhandedly think, uh, we work with nine here, um, and three Lagodactyla species, uh, which are small um, day geckos. Um, and then there's like 50 species of those. Um, they're one of the only species that won't just devour their, their offspring. Usually if you hatch in cage, if you're not pulling the babies out immediately, you're gonna not find the babies. Either the parents eat them or they will just kill them um and it stinks but it happens um a lot of the time these guys will lay eggs uh two eggs at a time um up to every 10 days to two weeks uh, so in the middle of hatch season it can be very 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 regular that you're getting eggs and many times they can be missed um they love laying in bamboo tubes or any uh receptacle like a floral tube um uh, egg hides uh, that suction cup or magnet uh, to the sides of the cage. I use these guys by Strudy's. Um, they suction cup. Uh, magnets are always better just because you have more uh, more purchase when it's you know it's not going to collapse on you um, versus suction cups. Suction cups will degrade water stains on glass will call it, cause them to not hold suction anymore. Um, but for the time being, they work. Uh, they will lay uh, in communal nests I've, I've seen, and they're also one of the few day gecko species that you can have multiple males together. If you're going for a bioactive approach with these guys, it works great. Um, they do drop a lot of waste, so I find that uh, taking the bioactive approach with, uh, I use dwarf white isopods and springtails, they'll break down a lot of the waste product falling near the ground level of the cage and keep your soil turned over. Um, allowing for your plant life, um, anything growing in the tank to have more healthy soil content, uh, just that turnover process. I miss these guys around three times a day. Um, I use a Miss King setup. It really cuts down on time. I'll do it in three to four um, mists a day and for about a minute duration, anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute just to wet down all the plants without oversaturating uh, the bedding, but also watering and hydrating everything in the cage. I'll also provide a small bowl of water. I use very small cups just to prevent any babies from drowning. 
Um, most people will raise their juvenile clemori up with the parents in the cage. I, just because my experience is in a lot more aggressive uh, day gecko parents, like the uh, Williams Eye that'll eat their babies fresh out of the egg, uh, mom and dad, um, I, I remove all my clemori babies. Um, I, I've seen both methods work without any errors, um, but there is every once in a while one of the uh, somebody's gecko is a little bit more cannibalistic than the others. It, it happens, so I just didn't want to have that variable. Also, just to keep um, numbers and everything documented, hatch dates, everything like that, it just, for my own collection, it made a lot more sense for me and documentation's sake. Um, sexing these guys is pretty straightforward. At around three, four months, some people are really good at it. Um, under magnification, looking at the femoral pores uh, right above the gecko's vent or cloaca, um, it is a V of pores that they'll use to scent uh, branches, things they climb on. In males, these pores will be a lot more defined because they push out a scent, uh, looks like a wax. It's, it's almost lipid based, and that's how they marker their territory. Uh, females, these will be a lot more digressed. Um, and another indication is in males, uh, as soon as they hit sexual maturity, they'll start to get like a yellow flush right around this line of pores. Um, where females, it, it just dots uh, very, very, very fine. Um, there is a little bit of, of error in it. A lot of people do have trouble. Um, but once they get the yellow flush around the pores, it's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Females will also develop chalk, uh, chalk sacs over time which is a development of calcium in their neck uh, on either side of their jaws. It's pretty common in a lot of geckos. Um, that's a good indicator as well. So if you have an adult female that's, that's sexually reproductive uh, aged, you can always look for the development of chalk sacs as an indicator if the pores aren't like, you know, a sure-fired uh, visual. Um, jeweler's loop is always recommended. Um, I'll use that as well as um, Amazon has some wonderful little pocket microscopes that hook up to a smartphone as well as a laptop and you can get 100x magnification um, handheld. Just hold the gecko in a tube, put it in a, I use test tubes a lot of the time or even a fly cup or deli cup so you can get the bottom of the gecko right up and be able to view it. Usually then you can get a good uh, visual on the pouring. Eggs from these guys are super simple to hatch. Uh, the female will lay two at a time, usually in a piece of bamboo, floral tube. Um, they can be stuck to stuff, but usually they, they roll free. Um, it's usually them being wedged in between things um, that I find they're not like the gluers that you'll see in the uh, other, some of the other Felsuma species like um, Robert Martensis even. Um, the, my favorite, the Williams Eye, that'll literally lay them right on a sheet of glass. For feeding schedule with the Clemori, I find that the, what's worked for me over the last few years is I'll provide mine with a, with a dry fruit diet, um, powdered. Um, this uh, allows for the diet to stay in the cage as long as it's not directly made wet. And I use a blend of Rapashi, uh, grubs and fruit for the high uh, protein content as well because they use uh, black soldier fly larva so that adds another variant of insect into their diet. I'll mix one of the seasonal pan uh, Rapashis in as well, uh, be it Mulberry Madness, Pineapple Express, uh, what is it, uh, Cherry Bomb. I'll also mix the Zoomed uh, Crested Gecko food, uh, one of their two blends that they make. Uh, because it has a very high probiotic content. And then I'll, as the last ingredient, mix uh, Croc Doc uh, from the UK that I import here. Um, it's one of my favorite nutritional additives mixed in. And I'll mix that all up very well and then serve it dry in the cages like this. And it'll last for anywhere from three days to a week um, where you can see tongue prints, everything on the, on the, the dust and it'll stay fresh. Uh, a lot of people feed uh, Rapashi wet or Pangea wet and it works, they love it, but I found that it attracts ants and it, it allows for them to get one quick meal, um, which 
is absolutely fine, but I've just found better luck with a consistent diet throughout the week. Um, I'll implement insects dusted with uh, calcium with minerals. Um, I'll use Mineral as well as Rapashi Calcium Plus um, twice a week. Um, this allows them to keep weight pretty well, grow pretty fast in, in smaller individuals. Uh, female Philsuma clemmeri will lay two eggs at a time. Um, they'll lay them inside of bamboo hides, like I said earlier. Um, any sort of floral tubes people use, um, pretty much any tubing that the gecko can get itself in. They like a tighter area, uh, something that the egg will feel secure in. Bromeliad centers even that are fairly dry. Um, the eggs need to be incubated at around 27 degrees Celsius, which is 86, uh, 80.6 Fahrenheit. Usually I always recommend one male to one to three females with these guys. You can do larger groups, but accommodate with a larger cage. Um, keep an eye out for any sort of bad behavior because the Felsuma will fight many times uh, for maybe no reason. Uh, sometimes there's something that we can't even tell but they will stress each other, bite each other, and it can be very severe. I've seen cases where limbs have been ripped off. Um, I've been very lucky and just had bites, things like that, tails get nipped. But for such a beautiful animal, it's really unfortunate to see them get uh, so marred up and their skin is paper. So handling them is gonna be a no. Um, if I ever handle uh, my Clemri or any of my Felsuma or Lagodactylus, I'll let them run onto my hand. Um, never try to restrain them really uh, a lot of the time any sort of pinching it's a nervous response like dropping a tail they'll deglove to escape a predator and I've heard of cases where they'll deglove their entire body and leave you with a sock of skin and just die of exposure it's really unfortunate um, UVB for these guys, I do 5.0 compact floral bulbs. Um, I've also done the high output T5s, both by Zoomed. Um, not real, uh, a lot of difference uh, between, it's, it's all about enclosure size. Uh, a long bulb is gonna do great on a bigger enclosure that has more light coverage, but on a 12, 12, 18, like the ones behind me, uh, these double domes work great. Uh, I use it in, alongside of a 50 watt basking bulb, also by Zoomed, in a, one of their dual uh, uh, mini deep domes. Uh, 12 hours of light a day. Um, you can lower it down to 10 in the in the uh, shorter parts of the year. Um, but that photo period definitely triggers off all of their breeding responses when they hit adulthood, and I've had a lot of luck with it. Um, I'll miss these guys, miss the full cage down, trying not to saturate the soil too much. Plants will do a great job of absorbing some of your excess water, but they're not able to deal with like a full flooded tank and you know, it just smells and the animal will not like it. Um, so always miss sparingly. I try to say uh, under a minute miss time. I use a Miss King, it has saved me so much time. I definitely recommend a Miss King. But if you just have one or two enclosures, hand misting them is fine. Uh, I usually will either go through the top or go through the sides. Um, if you don't want to open the door, because that does risk the gecko running out, these guys can be very fast. But they can also be very friendly. A lot of people will put little dabs of food on their hand and reach in, and the gecko will actually lick the uh, Pangea, Rapashi, or even uh, like a, a fruit paste made from your own home puree. Um, honey, anything like that, but I definitely recommend sticking to the commercial uh, diets because too much sugar um, and fruits can, can always be adverse to their health. These guys also occur in bamboo forests, so many species of Felsuma do very good with bamboo, and I definitely recommend uh, a jumble of bamboo. You can always get bamboo from the outdoor section at Home Depot or Lowe's, the unstained tiki torches, just cut them down to size, but make sure that the unstained ones, they'll be uh, more of a yellow or the stained ones will be brown. Um, that's really what I use for all my cages. They're usually around five to six bucks per torch, but I mean, you get a, about a five foot piece of bamboo. Um, they'll also lay their eggs in the bottoms of the sections of bamboo and use them for hiding. Um, sometimes having two or three geckos crammed into one, they, they seek a lot of uh, shelter within them. Um, 
I'll use that and plant some pothos or any other peperonia species and trim it back when necessary. But that combination of factors usually promotes a really uh, harmonic uh, enclosure for this species, along with a lot of the other felsuma. This is one of my recently built felsuma cages. I thought I'd show you guys this to show you what a young clemmeri or any smaller felsuma for a grow up cage. Um, I'll have the feeding ledge right here so you can do your fruit paste diet in little half ounce cups without drowning them. I use just a small dab in the cup and a little water dish. A lot of people don't do water, but I always say it doesn't hurt. Um, I'll miss these guys around three times a day. Um, same as the adults. And for these, I have a high output T5, 48 uh, inch bulb to power this whole section, along with these little puck lights. Um, you can get these at the lighting section in Home Depot. They're great. They're for like lighting, uh, like trophy cabinets, stuff like that. And I use an additional dimmer, not the one that's used in the package. And you can zero these in to like anywhere from 114 to like 78 degrees so gives you a perfect hot spot which for these guys around 85 90 in just one spot in this cage it's right here on this branch but you don't want to heat up the entire cage that way there's a thermo gradient as it goes out so it'll be 90 right there on that stick and then it'll be 85 uh, 80 75 and down into like the lower 70s in the corner so that they have the option to be able to go throughout the cage and choose what temperature is going to serve them and their metabolism in that moment. These guys like cover but will be pretty bold and out in the open. They're super social so they'll chase each other around. Uh, usually it's no problem. Keep an eye out for any biting, uh, bite marks, stuff like that. They are probably one of the friendliest, boldest geckos. I've even seen several YouTubers that'll feed them off their hands, they'll take bugs out of your hands. Um, and overall, I give them a 10 out of 10 for uh, like a beginning entry level, small felsuma gecko. They're pretty cheap um, as far as the rare felsuma go, being about 100 to $150 as of right now. Um, and for such a bright gecko that there's no other felsuma that really matches them in color they really keep their namesake being neon um i saw my first one in the uh old day geckos book back in the 90s and i remember them being um the caption for the picture saying that they were just recently described to science and that was early 90s when the book was published and i just knew i had to own some and when i got a chance to a couple years back um I jumped on it and ever since then they've gotten more and more popular so if you want to get yours definitely do your research set up a cage get all your temps right um, get all your food setups and you shouldn't have any issue but if you do hit me up in messenger um, send me an email I'm always here to help uh, I answering day gecko questions all day most every day um, so it's no issue no questions too dumb um, I had a lot of fun making this video today, and um, if anybody wants to give me a suggestion for uh, an upcoming video, I'm thinking we're going to be doing more on the felsumas we work with here, uh, felsuma ornata, um, Robert Martenzi's pasteuri, um, our Hawaiian gold, uh, gold dust blue line pro project we've been doing, um, Cepedianas, we, we have a bunch of the rare felsuma and lagodactylus that we'd like to get into. Um, like and subscribe if you haven't, and um, look forward to making this next video, guys. Have a good one.